This is our fourth and final in this series on the presence of God. I believe we're going to uh, preach on, on uh, the power of praise next week. We could use that. Uh, learning to live in God's presence, fourth in the series. Today's focus, as the title suggests, and remember the title of this message is what? Learning to live in God's presence. And the emphasis is on the right syllable. You've got to put the right emphasis on the right syllable. Okay? Which is learning to live in God's presence. God's presence is an awesome place to live. Being in God's presence should not be a drudgery, but rather a bring a sense, and there's that word bring, Barb, today, today's word, but rather bring a wonderful sense of the abundant life that is freely available to us and to every believer in Christ. Remember John 10.10, 10, the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, the thief, Satan, comes to kill and to destroy your life. He'll do everything he can to rip you apart in a hundred ways. That's why he comes. That's his purpose. That's his job description, to rip your life apart. Don't let him. In its place, we put the presence of God, and Jesus said, I come to bring abundant life, not just so-so life, but I come to bring abundant life. And where my presence is, there is an awesome sense of abundance. And we're going to look at what that means today. God's presence brings pleasures for everyone. And joy. How many of you like pleasures? How many of you like uh, pleasures? I got to tell you, we drove down uh, uh, to Erie yesterday, and I had uh, Andrea <clears throat> in the car. And we discovered one of the joys of spring. Farmer's daughter was open. <laughs> oh. And we went down, and we, we had stopped, done a little shopping, and as, as we're, uh, we, we had eaten, and we ate a golden corral. Any of you ever eaten a golden corral? So I'm not the only sinner here. Okay. Whoa, is that good food. Wow. Wonderful food. And to finish off the meal, Andrea had an ice cream cone. And I put all the sprinkles on the top, and she put a little gummy bear on the top of that. And it was a good ice cream cone. So we're driving home, and she's really tired. She's laying her head down like this, and she keeps falling asleep. But about every two minutes, it's She's like those whack-a-moles, you know. <laughs> and I said, what is she looking for? And the closer we got, I realized I had told her on the way up, we'd stop and get an ice cream cone. Well, I thought she had an ice cream cone, you know, an hour before. She doesn't need a lot more sugar. What she was looking for was, where's the farmer's daughter? When I said to her, Andrea, are you looking for a farmer's daughter? She said, yeah. I said, well, it's right around the corner. We're going to go there. We'll get you your ice cream cone. She went, yay, woo! You know, she just literally coming unglued. Great pleasure to her. Mommy, I'm sorry. But she had two ice cream cones yesterday about an hour apart. Did she sleep at all last night? She did. Okay, we tuckered her out, I think. Uh, that's a pleasure. Each of us have things we like to do with it that's a pleasure. For me, it's more to ride motorcycle. I love riding motorcycle. I've been out once so far this year. Uh, but it brings me great joy and pleasure just to relax and go up through the backcountry woods on, uh, on my motorcycle. But the presence of God brings the greatest joys. It doesn't cost you any money. You don't have to wait for the right season. You don't have to have any equipment. You don't have to go anywhere, and you can be totally alone other than God's presence, and you can go into his presence and know the greatest pleasures and joys. And they're based on the fact God loves you. Man's love falls apart. Any of you discovered that? None of us are perfect. Anybody find a perfect love outside of with Christ? Have any perfect husbands here? No, husbands, you don't get to raise your hand. Any perfect wives? No wives, you can't raise your hand. Okay. There's no such thing as a perfect husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend. They don't exist. We're all human. But God is the perfect lover. He loves you in ways that you can't even imagine, and His love will carry you into eternity. 
It'll be awesome. And it is not only now, but all the way into eternity. It's joys forevermore. Listen to this. Psalm 1611. O oh Lord, you will show me the path of life. We have a lot of uh, young folks here today, and I am so delighted that you're here. Let me tell you, sometimes it gets confusing and frustrating. You don't know where you're going. You don't know what to do. You know, okay, I'm going to college. How will I do in college? What will I do after I get out of college? The path of life can be confusing and frustrating and expensive, <laughs> especially when it's college. <laughs> Uh, where do I go? What do I do? The scriptures are very clear. Oh, Lord, you will show me the path of life. You'll show me where to go. You'll give me that wisdom. You have to make the choice to follow his path. You can follow the other path, and let me tell you, it'll bring sadness and miserableness and regret and heartache to you and to those around you. But following Jesus' path will bring you great joy. So he will show you the path of life, and in his presence is dribs and drabs of joy. No? A little tiny bit. Drips of joy. How much joy? Fullness. Fullness of joy. I wish our seniors were a little bit more conservative. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't know how to be conservative, and neither do I. Praise God. Fullness of joy is in your presence, Lord, and at your right hand are drudgeries forevermore. Is that what it says? No, it's not drudgeries forevermore. Pleasures forevermore are in literally the right hand of God the Father. You want to hang with Jesus because there are pleasures and joys and healings, by the way, as well. <laughs> Praise God. God's presence brings protection during the storms of life. We, God never promises that there won't be storms of life. I've never seen God promise in his word that you just receive Jesus and you'll never go through any rough times. All of us go through rough times. But the joy of that is that Jesus walks through every millisecond of that rough time, of that storm. And so God's presence brings protection during the storms of life. Psalm uh, 19, or Psalm 91, I think all of us love this psalm, especially verses 1 and 2. He who dwells in the secret place. What's the secret place? The presence of God. He who dwells in the secret place, the very presence of the Most High God, shall live continuously under the shade, under the shadow or protection of the Almighty. I call that passive protection. Sometimes you just, you know, you're outside and you want to enjoy the, the summertime, but you want a little shade over you. It makes the heat a little bit more bearable and a little bit more fun. Uh, God gives us passive protection sometimes. He says, you just rest, sit there, and uh, I will just passively you know, give you shade or you can rest under my shadow and even through the hard times I'll be there with you and you just kind of rest. But there's also a sense of, uh, of uh, active protection. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. You're in a battle. My refuge and my fortress. He will bring you protection during the hard times. That's good news. He's our shield and our buckler. He's our fortress and our refuge, our protection in the midst of the hard times. God's presence brings great power, great power to overcome life's problems. Uh, take you to a story you all know well. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17 and starts with verse 32 and then goes on to verse uh, 50. Remember the story of David and Goliath? That's how they're pronounced in the Hebrew. David and Goliath. You know them as David and Goliath uh, in the English transliteration. David was a little shepherd boy. In fact, he was out tending the sheep. And his brothers, who were big, strong, strapping men of war, were gathered in the heat of battle 
with the Philistines on one side, and they had this massive giant, and every day they would send uh, Goliath, Goliath out, and he would taunt the Israeli soldiers. He would say, hey, anybody want to come fight me? Take me on? And he humiliated the Israeli, Israelite army. Just humiliated them. None of them would go out and face him. It doesn't say that several went out and tried and died. It says nobody would go. Wow. So this little shepherd boy by the name of David. Yep, David, David comes and he says, Here, Daddy sent me with this lunch for my brothers. Where are they? And he takes the lunch to the brothers and he says to several soldiers, How's the battle going? And they said, Oh man, it stinks. We're losing. We're being humiliated, devastated. They got this big giant. And David, who was a young man of faith, don't ever let anybody despise your age. Don't ever let anybody despise your youthfulness and your age. The scriptures are very clear. In fact, the Apostle Paul wrote that to Timothy. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer in word and in deed. And so here's David, and he says, what do you mean this giant is, is decimating uh, our, our troops, just humiliating them? Why? Why are you letting him do this? David's a little runt. What do you mean, David? Go home, his brother said. Are you here to taunt us more? Goliath can do that. We don't need you to taunt us. Get out of here. Go home. And he goes up to the king, Saul, and he says, I'll fight him. I'll fight him. And the king looks at him and says, no, 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 you won't. <laughs> Here, little boy, you need to go grow up some. And David said, I'm not going home. I will kill this man. Something in Saul, who, by the way, was a wuss, if he were any kind of a leader, he'd have been out there leading the fray to go get Goliath or Goliath. And he's back in there shivering and shaking with the rest of the soldiers. And something in Saul said, God, is that you? Are you doing something? Saul wasn't very used to hearing from God. And he looked at David and he said, okay, well, I'll tell you what. Here, put on my armor. <laughs> Here's David. And here's the king. And so the king tries to put Saul's armor, his own armor, on David. And it doesn't fit. He's going to protect him and send him with protection as he goes out to the battle. You know what? You be the you that God created you to be. Never mind trying to be somebody else. You don't have to be anybody else. Be the you that you, God created you to be. You have your strengths and and, uh, you know, your powers in the things that God has enabled you to do through his giftings in your life. And so David was a shepherd boy, and he used slingshots. How many of you fired slingshots? We, I did when we were kids, yeah. Uh, never hit anything with them, but <laughs> I wasn't as good as David. They just took two strips of leather and put a little pocket in them in the middle, and he would put stones in there and hold both ends and swing them around. And when he was ready to aim it, he'd let go of one end and the stone would fly out. He killed bears with his slingshots. He killed lions with his slingshots who were coming after the sheep. And he looked at this giant and he said, who in the world do you think you are coming against my God? Sometimes a kid has the faith to do what adults can't seem to get done. And he walked up there and said, the, the, uh, the uh, Goliath, the giant, said, uh, I come against you in the name of all my gods. And he listed his gods. And David said, I come against you in the name of the Lord God of Israel. And by the way, his name that David used was the name Jehovah Sabaoth. Does that? That's not Sabbaths. That's the Hebrew for the Lord of the armies. He's the commander of all the armies. That's the name of God. And David said, I come against you in the name of all of the command, or all in the, in the name of the commander of all the armies of Israel. And I will take your head off, Goliath, and I will, you know, 
feed your body. Literally, he says, I will feed it to the birds and the animals. Goliath just laughed at him. And David stepped back, and David had taken five stones, five smooth stones. Interesting. Bible history tells us that Goliath had four brothers. David was no dummy. He took five stones, one for Goliath, and if his four brothers came, they were getting the same whooping. Wow. I call that faith. Power to overcome your circumstances. And David stood there, and he just whirled that thing around, and it literally released, and that stone went into the giant's forehead and knocked him down, flat on his keister, as they say. <laughs> and David went over and drew out the sword of the giant, and with all he could, lifted it up and took the giant's head off. I call him a giant because he was significantly bigger than anybody else on, uh, on the, uh, in the Israeli army. Took his head off and later presented it to the king. And all of it, he didn't, his four brothers didn't come out looking for David. They took off running. Have you been at a standstill in your life? Israel was at a standstill. Couldn't seem to go anywhere. Couldn't seem to figure out how to fight the enemy. God is going to overcome the enemy on your behalf. And you need to believe in that God and in his power. All you need is the faith of a child and something as simple as a slingshot of faith. And just release those stones literally into that situation, those stones of prayer, and say, God, I don't know what you're going to do, but you're going to do something, and it'll be miraculous. God, take the head off the giant of this monster within my, my life, whether it's your finances or relationships or your health or whatever it is. And release that stone of faith and send it into that giant that's coming against you. And trust God to do the work. He'll do the work. Wow. You come to me with a sword and a spear and a shield, but I come to you in the name and in the power and in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. Folks, that's the way we're supposed to walk every day of our lives. In faith that God is with us and his presence will bring the enemy down, whatever it is, however the enemy is coming against us. The Lord of hosts, that's Jehovah Sabaoth's, the commander of the armies, the God of the armies of Israel whom you have defiled. We need to announce to the world there's a price to pay for coming against our God. There is a price to pay. David said, I understand the presence of God will overcome every situation that's negative in my life. The presence of God brings peace always and by all means. I love this one. <laughs> For 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 3 and verse 16. Would you say that first word with, with me? Now. When? Now. now. Not when you get to heaven. Now. Right now. The Lord himself, that is the Lord of peace, in the Hebrew, that's Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom. Maybe we need to do what the Jews do. They greet one another with Shalom. The Lord's peace be on you. Lord's peace. You look troubled? Jehovah Shalom. The, Lord, the Lord's peace is yours. Be at peace. Now, it says, right now, the Lord of peace himself, through his presence, will give you his peace. I love what Jesus said just as about he was the night before he was ready to be uh, sent to the cross for our sins. He looked at the disciples and explained to them he was leaving. They didn't get it, but he explained them. And he said, my peace give I unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid neither let it be afraid I give you my peace not as the world gives 
And in this passage, it says, the Lord Himself will give you His peace. Well, once in a while, we'll get that peace. Don't ask for it too often, right? What's it say? But Yeah, but what does always mean? Oh, always. It means forever and ever. God said, I will give you my peace in the midst of whatever you're going through. My peace. And how will he give it to you? That's the, that's the, let me see, the time is now. And then he says, I'll give it to you when? Always, from now on, forever and always. But how will I give it to you? By all means. Any needs or any means you need, God will take whatever means possible. He may use healing. He may use money. He may use prayers. He may use all kinds of things to give you his peace, to show you that he is there. And then he winds up that passage to say, the Lord will be with you. Paul was a southerner, came from southern Israel. Ugh. The Lord be with y'all. The Lord be with you all. Okay. So how many of you is he going to be with? All? How often will he do that? Always. How will he do that? By all means. I don't think there's any exceptions in there, folks. I don't see a single exception in that clause. He simply says, you have my peace available to you always under all circumstances through whatever it takes for me to get it to you and forever. Wow. <laughs> Lord will be with you always. That's his presence. Being with you is the fact that God is present. Finally, the last one is God's presence brings us prosperity. And it does. Now, I don't preach a prosperity gospel that God will give you three color televisions that are 90 inches each and 14 cars in your 20-car garage. And that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about whatever you need, God will give you. And often he's given me way beyond what I needed and what I wanted. And even beyond what I wanted to give me things that I couldn't have even dreamed for, he's given to me. God brings prosperity or success in all things. Joshua chapter 1. This is a crisis, and we're about to done here. Moses died. He was their leader. He led them for 40 years. And they had a change and shift commanders and Moses dies and they're going well what well, now what are we going to do three and a half million Jews in the middle of the desert and their leader dies what are we going to do they went into a panic and God says no I've given you Joshua otherwise known in the Hebrew as Yeshua Yeshua knows that his name is Yeshua <laughs> uh, that's why when you name one of our sons Yeshua and God's not done with him yet uh, and he said to Joshua, as you take over, you tell the Israelites this, study this book. What's the book? Bible. The Bible. This book. Meditate on this book day and night. Obey whatever is comfortable in it. No, obey everything in the book. And when you obey everything in the book, then you will what? Prosper and what? Succeed. Succeed. In a few things you attempt. What's it say? In all you do, you will succeed. Do not be afraid. Do not be uncouraged. Discouraged. Don't let the enemy steal your courage. For the Lord your God is what? That's presence. His presence is with you. Wherever you go, His presence will bring you His prosperity. We're closing with things, with uh, this the slide that we've shared before, these things. Make God's presence our passion or our first of all of our loves. We love all kinds of things. Andrea loves ice cream. But I think she loves Jesus more. <laughs> uh, I love motorcycles, but I love Jesus more. 
you may love whatever. You may love your kids, but you love Jesus more. Okay? He is our point of focus for all things. Take God's perspective through his presence. Our power source to overcome all things. All things. And finally, our provision for God in all things. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord.